chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit this morning. Yes. Thank you for the gifts of the Spirit, Lord God. Yes. That are working and operating in our midst this morning. Oh, Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Beginning with verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and, ex and eternal way of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Would you pray with me this morning, Father, we thank you. Lord, for your visitation this morning, we thank you for your presence, Lord, that is in our midst. And Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would move in this place, Lord. Continue to move in this place today. Lord, to speak to our hearts and our souls and our spirits this morning. Lord, I pray that that our minds would be clear this morning and our hearts and spirits open and receptive to your word this morning, Lord God, that you may minister healing to us, that you may minister encouragement, that you may minister hope to us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody in the house of God said, Amen. 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 May be seated this morning. I want to speak to you this morning about a secret that I believe that the Apostle Paul had in the verses of Scripture this morning. I want to speak to you about Paul's secret to not losing heart. He said in verse 16, after he, he, he gives us all the things of of, of what he's been through and what he's going through and how he tells us that all the tribulation and all the trouble and all the trial that we face, that even though we go through all of these things, he said in verse 16, for which cause we faint not. Paul is telling us that regardless of what he must face or what he must go through, he does not give up, he does not give in, and he does not lose heart. Church, because he has somebody on his side that the rest of the world does not have. He has Christ on his side. He knows Jesus as his Lord. And he had the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in his life. Yeah. This is a very powerful statement that Paul made. It's easy to come to a place where you are ready to throw in the towel and just quit. But Paul had discovered a spiritual secret that enabled him to be encouraged, even in the midst of circumstances that would have discouraged anyone else. Church, I want to tell you this morning, Paul's life was not easy. Can you say amen? Amen. As he is writing to this same church in the same letter a little later on in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 27, he pens these words. He said, Of the Jews, five times I received forty stripes, save one. He said, Three times I was beaten with rods, and once I was stoned, and three times I suffered shipwreck. Mm -hmm. 
A night and a day I have spent in the deep. In journeying often in peril of water and peril of robber and peril of mine own countrymen. In peril by the heathen, in peril the, in the city, in peril in the wilderness, in peril in the sea, in peril among false brethren. In weariness, in painfulness. In watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and naked. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But in spite of all those trials and all those tribulations and all those burdens, Paul is able to say, I never lose heart. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is there anyone here this morning in this sanctuary? Is there anyone among us this morning that can say, I never get discouraged? I didn't think so. Is there anyone here that can say I've never been discouraged and I don't get discouraged? I didn't think so. You see, we've all stumbled at discouragement. And we've all wanted to quit from time to time. We've all felt like David who said uh, in one of the songs, uh, he said, if I could just sprout weed like a dove, I would just fly away from all
just become discouraged about what's happening in the world. Sometimes we become discouraged about what's happening in our bodies. Come on, I don't know about you, but the older I get, to, hallelujah, the less able I am to do something. Some days I get up and, and I feel okay, and other days I get up and, and uh, I need the Lord to help me get out of bed. Come on, somebody. Hello. I remember a time when when I was younger, I could I could just spring out of bed and let it bother me. But the older I get, the less I'm able to do that. Come on, somebody. Sometimes I get up and my back's hurting, and sometimes my feet hurt, and sometimes my knees are bothering me. Sometimes I wake up with a headache. Sometimes I wake up with a, with a aches in places I didn't even know I had. Hello. So what I'm saying is just living sometimes becomes discouraging because, uh, listen, I realize that I can't do what I used to do. Amen. Sometimes my mind tells me, oh yeah, you can still do that, and I start trying to do it, and my body says, oh no, you can't. Amen. <laughs> Hello? Amen. You can't do that anymore. No. And then sometimes because of things like that, we get discouraged. Hello? Uh, I have I have problems sometimes uh, remembering things. I used to not have that problem, but I can walk in, I can be outside and walk in the house or something, and once I get in there, I forgot what I went in there for. Amen. And I start back out what I was doing, and it either hit me. Oh yeah, I remember. And I got to go do it right then, or I it'll slip my mind again. Come on. Amen. Amen. And then we look at the things that, that's happening in the world today. There's lots of things that cause us to become discouraged. Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? But I want you to remember Paul's words in verse 8, 9, and 10. He said, We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Uh -huh. You see, it is also our experience that when life and people turn against you, it's easy to come to the place where you just want to quit. Yeah. Hello? I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands this morning, but I know that all of us here have been at that place at one time or another where we just wanted to throw our hands up and say I could. I had a member of my family member one time, a long time ago, after, after I first got saved, and they had, and some of my family had came in and, and gotten saved after us, and well, he had, he had one of my brother-in-laws had been serving the Lord for several months, uh, almost a year. And one day he was telling me, he said, brother-in-law, he said, uh, you know what, I, I had it easier when I wasn't living for the Lord. Uh -huh. It seems like since I've been living for the Lord, it seems like the devil has, has set his sights on me. It seems like i got a target on my back. And every time I turn around, it's like the devil is attacking me. He said, I had it easier when I wasn't serving God. And I just looked at him and, and through what the Holy Spirit was giving me, I just looked at him and I said, Brother Law, back then uh, the devil already had you. He didn't have to work on you. Right now you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and the devil wants you back. Uh, don't let him have that satisfaction. Uh, you just hang on there. Uh, you just serve God with all of your heart. Uh, and you give it everything you're in a race. Uh, and you're running to win that race. Uh,
where you don't have to lose heart. You can reach a place where you can press home. Hallelujah. In spite of what presses you down, you can press home. In spite of what the enemy throws at you, you can keep on standing as long as you hold on to that shield of faith. Hallelujah. We got that shield of faith. Paul the Bible says that the enemy is constantly firing those fiery darts at us. And as long as you hold up that shield of faith, my friend, that shield of faith is going to stop every one of those fiery darts. Hallelujah. 
this, this old body getting older every day, getting weaker every day. But you know what my Bible tells me? My Bible tells me that the man on the inside, he, he's not like that. Although the body is perishing, and although the body is getting weaker, and although the body is headed for the grave, the inner man, hallelujah, should be getting stronger every day. Because the inner man is not headed to the grave. The inner man is headed to glory. Can you say We do all of these things for the body. 
We, we, we do all of these things for a hard but even our houses. You know, if you don't take care of them, they'll fall apart. Amen. I mean, and so we, we take care of these things that are perishing, yet we make no provision for the inner man which must be renewed day by day. Now I know, I know, and I know that you probably know mm -hmm. that even though this body is perishing, our inner man don't have to. <laughs> even though this, this body is going to be laid in the grave one day, this inner man is not. Mm -hmm. You see, this inner man has a destination. There's only two destinations, but he's going somewhere. Amen. Because the, the spirit man, the spirit that's in us, uh, cannot die. He's going to live. Amen. And, and his destination is either, either, it's either going to be hell or it's going to be heaven. It all depends on what you feed him. Amen. If you if you want your inner man to survive, if you want your inner man to be strong, and, and you have intention, been born again, and, and you have intentions on going to heaven, then friend, you better feed that inner man, and you better feed him the right stuff. Hello. You better feed him the Word of God. Hello. You better find an altar of prayer every day. Come on, somebody. You say, well, Pastor, what do you got to do to go to hell? Nothing. And we got Christians sitting in churches. Come on. Ain't doing nothing to renew the inner man every day. Huh? That's why we lose heart. We lose heart because we focus our attention on everything but the one thing that matters most in our lives. We take no thought for our relationship with God. And for the renewing of the inner man day by day. But I made a statement a while ago. We listen, we, we got Christians running around. People that call them, I mean, I ain't gonna call them Christians. People that call themselves Christians. Oh, you ain't gotta go down to that church house to be a Christian. <clears throat> Going down to that church house ain't gonna make you no more Christian. I won't preach, but y'all just Well, I feel like y'all trying to hold me back. Preach.
And the closer we get to the coming of Jesus, he says, we y'all y'all need more church, not less. I'm just paraphrasing a little bit about you. You go read it for yourself and you can put your own interpretation on there if you want to, but I'm just telling you what the Word of God said. You don't need less church, you need more. Amen. We need to be where the power of the Spirit is. Can you say amen? But we take no thought for our relationship with God and for the renewing of the inner man day by day. Listen, we got to do something. People, people become discouraged because we don't spend time in the Word of God. People become discouraged because they don't come to the house of God. People become discouraged because they don't have a prayer life. People become discouraged because they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And then sometimes, sometimes as Christians, we become discouraged because the enemy is attacking us. Amen? But we need to know, we need to realize this morning that the greater one is on the inside of us. Amen. He wouldn't be attacking you if he wasn't afraid of you. Amen. He wouldn't be attacking you if you didn't have something that he was afraid of. Amen. He's afraid of you. He's afraid of Jesus that's in you. Yeah. He's afraid of what you can do. He's afraid of what you can accomplish. He's afraid of the witness that's inside of you. You see, we're made overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. He's afraid you're going to tell somebody else, hallelujah, about the victory that you have in Jesus. He's afraid you're going to yeah. tell somebody else, hallelujah, that they can have salvation, that they can be set free, that they can be delivered, that there's power in the blood of Jesus, that there's power In verse 18, Paul reveals another part of the secret for not losing heart. And we've, done, we've been talking about this already. Not only, not only can our inner man be renewed day by day by spending time with the Lord and in the presence of the Lord and in God's Word. He said that everything in this world is temporary. And it's going to pass away. Oh, yeah. Just like this body's temporary. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? God's got, a, God got an eternal body of prayer to be prepared for us. Yeah. Hallelujah. We got something yeah. to look forward to. Can you say amen? Yeah. Yeah. He says everything in this world is temporary and it's going to pass away. But those things that we can't see in heaven which belong to us, they are eternal. And you know what we need to do? We need to focus on those things that are eternal and not those things that are temporary. The problem with the church today is we're focused on the things that are temporary and we're not focused on the things that are eternal. I tell you, you might as well stop focusing on your problems down here because one day they're going to be gone anyway. Hallelujah, what you need to be focused on is where you're going to spend eternity. Where you're going to be at. See, you're a pilgrim and a stranger passing through this world on your way home. Amen. If you're a child of God. Amen. Do not focus on here and now. Focus on the eternal. Yes. The problem is we want to focus on the here and now. Does anybody, does anybody in the house remember what called Peter to sink? Does anybody in here remember what called... Listen, Peter was walking on water. Oh, yeah. Yeah, listen, everybody, everybody put Peter down. Everybody, ain't nobody, ain't no other man ever walk on water beside Jesus. Amen. True. Hello? Amen. You remember, and anybody remember what got Peter? He was, he was focused on the eternal. He was focused on Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. His eyes were focused on the Lord. But when he stepped out of the boat, the Bible says he was walking on water. Yes. But he took his eyes off the eternal. Oh, yeah. And he got them on the temporary. Uh -huh. You see, the storms in your life are not eternal. They're just temporary. Uh -huh. Let me just tell you this morning, I don't care what you're going through this morning. It will come to pass. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said it will come to pass. It's just temporary. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on the one that can help you get through the problem. Don't focus on the problem. Yes. 
you see along the way, in your journey, along the way you may become disillusioned, discouraged, and sometimes even defeated, but you don't have to lose heart. If you know who Jesus is. Yeah. If you know that you're not listen. If you keep the inner man fed. Uh -huh. You keep the inner man strong. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. When you, when you know that you know that you know that you know that you know. That even if everybody else forsakes you. Uh -huh. Mom and daddy, grandma and grandpa, brothers and sisters, the children, grandchildren, your whole family forsakes you, your friends walk away from you, uh, everybody at the job plays is against you, when nobody else is with you, as long as you know that you are in a relationship with Jesus, uh, hallelujah, you're taking care of that inner man, yeah. and you're spending time with him every yeah. day, hallelujah, and you're spending time in God's Word, then you can know that you know yeah. that you know that
You see, it's the enemy who comes to discourage you. It's the enemy who comes and tells you, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't. Oh, they wouldn't bother to tell you. Huh? My Bible tells me that I can do all things with Christ. Man. I know my body's headed to the grave. But I'm not. Man. I'm going home with the Lord. Man. So as long as I do what I can to take care of the enemy, my Bible says that the internet can be renewed every day. Amen. Get up every day, renewed in the Spirit of God, in the presence of God, in the Word of God. Yeah. Renewed every day. Another thing. Somebody ought to go to prayer. 